Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a doc. Although she is in training to be a scientist, she's getting very good with her lab work. Now, last week I made a video covering some of the bollocks claims that were made by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in his interview with Joe Rogan. But one thing that I didn't cover was his false claims that vaccines cause autism. And the reason for that was because I thought the claim deserved a video of its own. And this is that video. Now, the vaccine autism claim started with a specific claim about the MMR vaccine, but some anti-vaxxers have now taken it further and extended it to all vaccines using spurious claims about vaccine ingredients. So, in this video, we will be first showing why the MMR vaccine autism claim is bollocks, and then we will look at the other claims and show that they are also bollocks. But before we get into the nutty vaccine autism claims, there is one important point that I would like to cover. Autism is a condition that affects how a person thinks, feels, interacts with others and experiences their environment. This doesn't mean that people with autism don't lead fulfilling lives and make important contributions to society they do. As Aspect, who are an Australian autism spectrum charity, say, autism is a different brilliant. And the fact that anti-vaxxers don't seem to understand this is one of the most despicable aspects of the dishonest vaccine autism claims. And speaking of those claims, it all started with a now retracted paper published in The Lancet by former Dr. Andrew Wakefield and co-authors. Believe it or not, this wasn't a randomised controlled trial, nor even a scientific study. It was merely a case study of 12 children with gastrointestinal symptoms, nine of whom had autism. And eight of the nine had parents who thought the symptoms of their autism had developed after the MMR vaccine was administered. Or so the paper said. We now know that the paper was fraudulent. Mr Wakefield changed the records, changed the stories and changed the numbers to create the appearance of an association where none existed. Journalist Brian Deere tracked down the patients in the study and found that none of their stories or information matched up with what was published in the final paper. He found that there were discrepancies as to whether the children had actually had autism and he even discovered that dates had been changed. More importantly, though, the Lancet paper alleged that eight of the 12 children reported symptoms days after the MMR. It turns out that for almost all of these children, that wasn't the case. And the study was commissioned and paid for by a group that planned litigation against the vaccine. Of course, the fact that Wakefield's study was fraudulent bollocks doesn't mean that there isn't an association between the MMR vaccine and autism. There are, though, a lot of studies that do show there isn't an association. For example, this study looked at data on over 10,000 kindergarten kids born in California between 1980 and 1994. The incidence of autism over that time increased from 44 per 100,000 births to 208 per 100,000 births, which is a 372% increase. In contrast, MMR coverage only rose from 72% to 82% over the same time period, which is a relative rise of 14%. Therefore, the MMR vaccine could not possibly be responsible for the huge increase seen in autism diagnoses. And there are many, many more studies that 
also make it clear that there is no link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Another example is this nationwide study from Denmark that looked at 657,461 children born in Denmark between 1999 and 2010. The researchers used population registries to collect information on MMR and other childhood vaccinations, autism diagnoses, sibling history of autism, and several factors thought to be related to a high risk of autism. They then looked to see whether autism developed in children who got the MMR vaccine compared with those who didn't. Out of the population, 6,517 children were diagnosed with autism. The chances of developing autism were the same in children who received the MMR vaccine and those who didn't. Similarly, there was no increased risk for autism after the MMR vaccination in subgroups of children according to sibling history of autism, autism risk factors or other childhood vaccinations or during specific periods after vaccination. Then there is this study which included 535,544 children who were vaccinated in Finland between November 1982 and June 1986. It found no association between MMR vaccination and autism. And it also found no association between MMR vaccination and encephalitis and aseptic meningitis. But who cares about all these studies? The anti-vaxxers have fairs reports. Okay, let's look at that. I ran a query on reports of autism or ASD, which is short for Autism Spectrum Disorder, for the MMR vaccine by the year the report appeared on VAERS. And as you can see, the results are far from uniform. They started out really low and then exploded when Andrew Wakefield's fraudulent claims started getting traction in the media. And now they are low again. If the VAERS reports were actually a reflection of the incidence of autism and ASD following vaccination, we wouldn't be seeing these wild fluctuations with publicity. They would be similar each year. So we know that the MMR vaccine is not associated with autism, but anti-vaxxers have decided to broaden their claims and blame it instead on various vaccine ingredients. The first cab off the rank was mercury, which was formerly present in the form of ethyl mercury as part of a preservative known as thimerosal in some childhood vaccines. And if you'd like to know how ethyl mercury is different from the mercury found in thermometers or the mercury found in fish, I have made a short clip about it and I will provide a link to it in the video's description. But back to the claim that this mercury is causing autism, there is one little problem. Thimerosal was removed from all childhood vaccines in the early 2000s, but autism rates continued to climb. And the same is true of countries where it was removed earlier. In Sweden and Denmark, thimerosal was removed from vaccines in the early 90s, but autism rates continue to increase the same as they did in other countries. This figure here shows the data from Sweden. The columns show the average cumulative dose of ethyl mercury by two years of age, whereas the line shows the incident rate of autism amongst two to 10-year-olds. And as you can see, as the amount of ethyl mercury that children received decreased and eventually became zero, the incidence of autism continued to follow an upward trend. And a similar trend was seen in Denmark. And we now also have a number of good quality studies showing that there is no association between thimerosal and autism. This review paper looked at 12 publications that investigated a link between thimerosal and autism, 10 epidemiologic studies, and two pharmacokinetic studies of ethylmercury. 
And these were their conclusions. Studies do not demonstrate a link between thimerosal containing vaccines and ASD. And the pharmacokinetics of ethyl mercury makes such an association less likely. Epidemiologic studies that support a link demonstrated significant design flaws that invalidate their conclusions. Evidence does not support a change in the standard of practice with regards to administration of thimerosal containing vaccines in areas of the world where they are used. And of course, as I previously said, it doesn't really matter because thimerosal is no longer used in childhood vaccines. It is only used in the multi-dose flu vaccine, which no one has to get because there is a single-use version available that doesn't contain thimerosal. Okay, so there is no link to the MMR vaccines and there is no link to thimerosal. What's next from the anti-vaxxers? The aluminium, of course. And if you live in the United States, that's what you call aluminum. Hmm, they are using a different name. What are they trying to hide? See, I can do the conspiracy stuff too. Now, aluminium salts are added to some vaccines as adjuvants, and this has been done since the 1940s. So no correlation with the increase in autism diagnoses. And the reason that aluminium salts are added is because they allow the body to create the required immune response with a smaller amount of antigen, which is a good thing. So let's look at why the aluminium autism claims are bollocks. The first thing to note is that aluminium is the most common element in the Earth's crust. And this means it is present in everything we eat and drink. And for babies, this includes breast milk and baby formula. Most importantly, we know that neither blood nor hair levels of aluminium are correlated with vaccine history. And if vaccines aren't causing an increase in aluminium levels, they can't be causing an increase in autism from aluminium. Okay, so we now know that the MMR vaccine is not associated with autism, thimerosal in vaccines is not associated with autism, and aluminium in vaccines is not associated with autism. But some anti-vaxxers are a bit more vague. They just claim there are a number of things in vaccines that cause autism. We also know that this isn't true. Here is a meta-analysis of five cohort studies involving 1,256,407 children and five case control studies involving 9,920 children. They found that there was no relationship between vaccine and autism and there was no relationship between vaccination and autism spectrum disorder. So why have autism cases been increasing? Well, rates of autism are tightly correlated with organic food sales and they are also correlated with cell phone use. But unlike anti-vaxxers, we know that correlation does not equal causation. In fact, the reason that we are seeing an increase in cases of autism is because the diagnostic criteria for autism has been expanded, which means that people who previously didn't fit their criteria now do. And as well as the broadening of the criteria, there is also now much greater awareness of the condition. So more people are coming forward for assessment. Also related to the broadening of the criteria for autism, in some cases there has been a reclassification of intellectual disability to autism. And that was explored in this study here, which looked at diagnoses of children enrolled in special education over time. This figure shows autism diagnoses in red and intellectual disability diagnoses in blue. As you can see, the autism diagnoses increase over time, but the intellectual disability diagnoses decrease over the same time period. So in summary, the claims by anti-vaxxers that vaccines cause autism are bollocks. 
If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or beautiful Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.